Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? Hello and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to be unboxing the Vitronics Cordless 3-in-1 Vacuum Cleaner. So when you look at it, uh, you can compare it to the Dyson next to it. It's very, very similar. Actually, it shares the same sort of lithium ion battery, a very similar runtime. It's about a third lighter. Um, and let's have a look and see if it's the same sort of length. You don't get the same number of tools, but the other thing to remember is in the UK, £68.99 with delivery. If you look at the current Dyson B11, uh, then you're looking at 669 so that's not far off 10 times the price now that does seem like an awful lot more money doesn't it so okay let's unbox the Vitronics and we'll see what you get for your money So it's well packed inside, it's in cardboard, which is obviously easy to recycle compared to some of the bits and pieces you get that has lots of polystyrene. We have um, a book there. If you need to have a look at that, I'll put some photographs of that at the end in case you've lost yours. That's the main piece of the unit there. So one of the first things I noticed there is it's obviously already got a charge, but unlike the Dyson, you have to hold the trigger all the time. This is an on-off. I would say that's an advantage. Once you've turned it on, it's on. And you can see you've got a very similar dust bin here. That empties, a bit more of a simple system to undo it but you've got your dustbin there similar bits and pieces and on the top you've got you see that there so you've got you've got two different types of power so you've got a power boost and i'm guessing like all these type of vacuums if it's running on the lower one you'll get a longer runtime the book says this is 45 minutes of runtime here and then the canister comes away completely, which is something that that doesn't happen on a Dyson and actually makes it a little bit easier to, um, to clean. If this gets a bit mucky, it's a lot easier to detach it from the battery and the electronics to get that clean. So that's quite a neat design. Now on the main drum, as I showed you, you can detach this completely from the motor. That's quite handy while it's charging. You'll see there's a little lock there. Now if you unlock that, the canister comes apart and then you get at the filter now it says it's a high capacity filter it doesn't mention anywhere that it's a HEPA filter but it's the same sort of idea that you take it out once a month uh, if it's soiled run it under a cold tap and then let it dry for 24 hours I'll just show you what it looks like inside so with the lid off there you can see this is the filter that's sort of got a rubber surround on it and it's got two different types of material so uh, this is your final filter before the vacuumed air goes back into the room and that's what you need to wash once a month. Um, it's quite shiny isn't it? I quite like all of that. So there you can see this charge in there. Now if you do find that all three of these LEDs come on that's a sign that either the rotor head is not spinning, it's got too many twines or hairs or something around it or there is a blockage in your pipe also the machine would just cut out if it can't actually uh, vacuum in a normal way so just watch out for that with your little LEDs there so you've got uh, a little selection of tools there You've got your crevice tool for the sofa. I think we'll use that in the car. 
uh, and you've got a very similar copy of the Dyson head here that can flip to be a wider crevice tool or you've got some brushes there. I mean, it doesn't have the quality feel of the Dyson one, I must admit. You can feel it's a little bit more made to a price. We've got the clip that goes on to store some of the tools which you have on the V11. I'm guessing that's a wall, I'm guessing that one's a wall clip. Here is your charger. Obviously I'm in the UK, so I've got a UK plug there. If you're in the US, you can have something slightly smaller than our chunky UK plug. You have a little pack here with the screws if you want to bolt this onto the wall. And here we have the main head. So, uh, two types of brush. Very similar design here to the way the Dyson runs with the little wheels and uh, the sort of sealy bit there that's um, felt to help seal it. And you can see it's uh, got the normal multi-position flexibility. If we compare that to the Dyson. You can see it's fractionally smaller. I'm not sure that's going to make an awful lot of difference. Uh, it's got a, a smaller aperture for the collection there. So yeah, possibly you're losing, uh, maybe you're losing 20% of your sweep with that one. That's actually a really nice colour. I don't know if you can pick that, that's a really nice purple. I'm guessing this clip's on here somewhere. You need to put your other tools in. So that bit, I guess, is going to go there. Oh, got the wrong way around, so it's that way. That's the one with the clip, and that positively links on, plonks onto that. And then on the other end, then hopefully, it's just a simple of clicking that bit in there. Oh, that was a bit harder. So there we are. Yeah. So unlike the Dyson, you're not sort of charging through a wall dock. It's just there. Okay, so charging is easy. It's your wall socket. And then as I showed you earlier, you have a little hole on the side, plug that in. And you've got some LEDs on the top there that are showing you how much charge you've got. Now it takes about three hours for full charge, but as the unit comes half charged, your first charge is probably gonna be less than that. And you do have enough charge to start vacuuming straight away. So that looks pretty straightforward, doesn't it? You've got this one which releases the canister. I guess these are uh, exhausts. Okay, so you've got a button on the bottom here. If you push that, that is your battery release. And there's your lithium ion battery. Uh, it says it's 22.2 VDC with a rating of 2200 mAh. Not a million miles away from the Dyson. But that battery's so cheap, if you did have a lot to do, you could probably just have two because that's very easy to click that in obviously with the Dyson the battery is built into the handle and you can't really do that easy you'd have to take it apart this is actually something Shark have pioneered really in the States because a lot of their cordless vacuums come with two batteries now which is quite a good idea and that obviously gives you an awful lot of vacuuming time okay right let's lay these two next to one another and have a look at the dimensions okay so there you can see the two vacuums next to one another so obviously the layout on the uh, Vitronics it's much more with the bin sort of vertically rather than horizontally there so that's a bit more reminiscent of some of the earlier Dysons. Um, you've got a slightly smaller battery I don't think you've probably got the quite the same level of filtration but very similar and you can see the way they store the tools is very similar. When you then have a look at the uh, working end of it it's about the same length there's not a lot in that Yes, you've got a slightly 
thinner sweep head for vacuuming so you're losing perhaps 20% of, of the width there. So I think all we can do now is have a little play around with both of these. I mean when you think one is 10 times the price of the other this could be quite a difficult decision for you as to which one to go for. You do feel a bit for Dyson, they're the ones who've done all the R&D and put all the millions of pounds into developing it and it would look like their patents are not managing to protect it particularly well. Anyway, let's have a little go. We'll have a look good of actually doing some vacuuming and uh, see what they look like. Okay, so let's have a look what we uh, got and our few quick stripes of vacuum in there. And you can see that this newer vacuum has already picked up some of the fluff from that carpet. This is a fairly new carpet and it's Dysoned every day. So it's definitely, it feels okay. You don't feel the same um, suction pulling you into the floor, but um, I don't know if we play around with the settings. No, you don't have quite the same grab on the carpet. So I imagine the suction that it is achieving there is not quite the same as the Dyson. But to be honest, on the Dyson, um, if you're not quite careful with the settings, it's so powerful, it's quite difficult to move it on this carpet. I tend to have to put it on the Dyson on the economy mode um, in order to be able to get it back and forth on this carpet without having quite a workout. I wouldn't say there's an awful lot on it on this type of surface. We'll just check it out on the, uh, on the kitchen tiles and see how the two fare on there. So at this point with the Dyson, we will be swapping to the sort of the hard roller there. Uh, which copes with hard surfaces better. Um, we've obviously only got with the cheaper one, we've only got the one head, so we're going to have a go with that one, see how it gets on. Okay, so my very unscientific little test there, um, it did pick up an awful lot. So here we go again, let's get the angle right. So it did pick up quite a lot there. You can see in the bottom of the drum. When you're going along the edge of the car, the edge of that hard uh, edge to the kitchen, you're losing almost two centimeters because that bit is not vacuuming. So anything that's right up against the edge here is quite difficult to get at. Where the Dyson will get it on the first sweep. So if you go like that. Uh, and it looks like you're going right to the edge, you're not because you've got that wide gap there. So I suppose you can just go this way and have it on the maximum setting there. And it seems okay. If you have it on its lower setting here, yes, then you're not going to wake all the kids or anybody else upstairs. In the UK, it's the number one selling hands-free vacuum. I don't think you can go far wrong for that money. You've got the same sort of length of warranty. I mean, any of us who've owned Dyson's know that you do spend a bit of time over the years on their help desk. I've had new motors, new drums, new pipes, and they are very good, but do they last any longer than anything else without a bit of help? No. And given that you could buy almost 10 of these uh, and have a new one every year, that certainly takes some thinking about. Anyway, please like, share and subscribe and do let me know how you've got on with some of these newer, cheaper brands that are on Amazon and eBay now, uh, particularly if you compared them to Dyson. Um, I'd love to hear your messages. So anyway, this is Paul from London, signing out. Please subscribe. I'll see you next time.